change the zone number 1960. Mr. Whitehouse. Thank you. This is an ordinance to amend the comprehensive zoning map of Sussex County from an HR1 RPC, High Density Residential District Residential Planned Community, to a HR1 RPC, High Density Residential District Residential Planned Community, to amend the conditions of approval of change of zone number 1858, which is ordinance number 2621, relating to the workforce housing requirements, internal road standards, and amenities deadlines for a certain parcel of land lying and being in Baltimore. Sussex County containing 14.84 acres more or less. The property is lying on the northeast side of Zion Church Road, which is Route 20, approximately 0.27 mile northwest of Bayard Road, which is Sussex County Route 384. The 911 address is not available. And the tax parcel ID is District 533, Map 11, parcel 82.00. Submitted into the record, Mr. President, we have a copy of Ordinance Number 2621 for CZ 1858 from December 11, 2018. We have a copy of letters we've received from the applicant a copy of the staff analysis, a copy of the staff analysis. We also have a copy of the Dell DOT service level evaluation response and a copy of the applicant's exhibits, including the applicant's suggested revisions to the conditions, which also include a proposed clean copy to the conditions of approval. I would note that we received zero comments in support and zero comments in opposition. And I, the application was subject to a public hearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission at its meeting of January 13th of this year. At its meeting of February 10th of this year, the Commission recommended approval of the application for the seven reasons and subject to the recommended revised condition wording as outlined in the Commission's motion. And Mr. President, a copy of that motion, along with the minutes of both of those meetings, is included in Council's paperless packet. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from Council? If not, Mr. Fuquay. Good afternoon, for the record. Uh, my name is Jim Fuquay. I'm representing the applicant. OA Oaks LLC, and obviously I cannot win a being brief contest. That would be impossible. I'm going to try to be as brief as I can be. Uh, there was a very comprehensive staff review uh, that you have that addresses an awful lot of this, so I don't want to get into repeating all that. Um, again, what this is is a, uh, an application to uh, amend certain conditions uh, for change of zone 1858. Uh, I am going to briefly just give some history for the record because actually only the president was on the council at the time that this was reviewed uh, just back in 2018. So uh, I want to just give you a little bit of background on this. The original application requested a change of zone uh, from HR1 to RPC for a 14.8 parcel of land located on the northeast side of Zion Church Road. Uh, the proposed use was a 178-unit rental apartment development and 36 of the apartments were going to be uh, have income qualifications in order to create workforce housing opportunities uh, for lower and moderate income county residents who worked in the area. Uh, the county had long recognized the need for workforce housing. Uh, it's doc well documented in both the designated uh, goals of the county's comprehensive plan uh, as well as uh, other ordinances. And in fact, in 2008, the county enacted an ordinance called the Sussex County Rental Program uh, to encourage the development of affordable rental housing for uh, the workforce housing. And unfortunately, as of 2018, over a 10-year period, no rental projects had been proposed uh, under that ordinance, due mainly to the required terms of the ordinance, which just made it not really feasible. Uh, in 2018, the applicant filed the, this HR1 RPC application proposing uh, what was to be called the Ashton Oaks development. Uh, this was going to be a market rate housing, uh, rental housing development with the workforce housing component. Uh, the applicant actually proposed the conditions uh, for the workforce housing qualifications. They were based on the county ordinance, but not exact. They were different uh, to make it uh, more uh, economically feasible to do it. That ap application was approved by the county council in December of 2018 with conditions A through S. Uh, the application before you today is requesting modifications of conditions B, G, and I. And very briefly, condition B addressed the operation and tenant qualifications for the 36 unit workforce housing uh, element. Uh, so this isn't a traditional land use condition. It's actually an economic formula as to who would qualify for this. Uh, condition G, uh, address the development streets and parking areas, uh, and it, uh, condition I address the time for completion uh, of the development recreational amenities. 
Uh, it's the, it, it is and was the intent of these proposed modifications to clarify and improve the language of the conditions and in no way interfere with the intended goal of providing the 36 wor workforce housing uh, rental units uh, for county residents. Uh, you have the material that was submitted in the staff analysis. The Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously recommended approval uh, of the modifications uh, at its meeting on February 10th. Uh, Preston Shell will very briefly explain uh, the issues involved in these conditions, answer any questions you may have, and there is one slight modification uh, from the Commission's recommendation uh, that he will explain. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Shell. Uh, Preston Shell with OA Oaks, the applicant. Thanks, Jim. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the items that the Planning Commission did not modify at all. One of them was related to when we were supposed to start our clubhouse, and I talked about the timing of the construction of apartments relative to the timing of construction of for sale product and how it really all gets built at once, and how because of that, there would be a big gap and a delay in, um, in the construction of our rental prop apartments and the problem that would cause. They rec they, we, we came to a kind of compromise at the hearing with the PNC Commission on starting, on completing the, no, I'm sorry, pulling the building permit and starting the amenities, um, once again, completing the amenities before we pull the building permit for the sixth building, and that works for us, and that's what's in the, uh, the recommended change from the Kemp Commission. Another item was relative to um, having more three bedrooms as opposed to one bedrooms. The original language said the percentage of restricted units, which is what we call the workforce housing units, had to be identical to the total percentage of the different types of units within the entire project. So if we had 20% one-bedroom units, then exactly 20% of the restricted units had to be one-bedroom units. In speaking with Russ Huxtable, who, I, who is here, he's with Milford Housing Development Corporation. They're the largest owner um, and manager, and I believe even builder, of affordable housing units uh, in Sussex County. Um, said, hey, look, the demand for your three bedrooms will likely be higher for the um, for the restricted units so give us a little bit more flexibility we recommended some language and the commission agreed with that language the biggest issue that we ran into which i'm just going to jump to right now was um we had talked in a lot of the meetings we had with staff we were talking about eligible income levels and saying hey the way we wrote these and most of these changes by the way are us correcting ourselves it's really not something that, that um, the county drafted that we didn't like. We, we drafted some of these things that we now realize after speaking with people like Russ and getting more familiar with affordable housing and how it's actually managed on the ground that we needed to modify. And the way we had written it is we had to kick out or not renew the leases of any household that happens to make more than 70% of area median income. So you can imagine a situation where we bring in, a, we rent a unit to a house household making 69% of area median income. The guy gets a $500 a week raise. And now we've got to kick him out the following year because we say, hey, you make above 70%. No, no programs out there, including your own program, by the way, including the, the county's new Sussex County rental program works like that. You basically have a, a, an eligible income bracket where if they, if they do tremendously better and can now afford more or less a market rate unit, then you do have to not renew their, their lease the following year, but you don't kick them out the second they make above that bracket you're targeting and setting the rents at. That was our error. But Vince recommended a clause at the end of Section 2. If you guys can take a look at the county's recommended conditions in eligible income, he writes, eligible income is 50 to 80% of the area median income for Sussex County adjusted for household size and as updated annually by HUD, provided that the average household income for all of the restricted units within the RPC is at or below 70% AMI on an annual basis. That's problematic from a management perspective because you can imagine a situation where you, you, rent a bunch, you rent the initial units, the 36 units. At time of rental, you're, you're below the 70%. Um, but those people recognize they have a pretty good deal. They're paying below market rents. They don't really want to move out, and then their incomes go up. 
And so let's say no one, just, just for argument's sake, let's say no one moves out and everybody starts to do a little bit better as a household, and now the average is 73%. The way this is written, we would have to go to some household that's still making below 80%, so still was within the eligible income bracket, and we'd have to say, I'm sorry, we can't renew your lease because you being in the, in the, in the applicant pool of the 36 units pushes us above this average we've agreed to. That would be very, we're, the reason I keep pointing back at Russ is he's our consultant on how we actually manage these units and the rentals of these, and he has a lot more experience on it than I do. Um, he said, look, if, if you do that and the, the household you've asked to leave, even if you ask them to leave because they're making the highest um, household income of any of your renters, they're making 79%, if they can claim discrimination of any kind, they will. They say, well, we're an African-American family but the family you moved in behind us was a, a white family. We believe we've been discriminated against. He says it causes a lot of problems and you really need to avoid that. Um, my recommendation, which actually Russ doesn't agree with and I just found out that out about 15 minutes ago and he has a simpler, better recommendation. So I'm not even, you know what, I'm not even gonna go into my recommendation because my recommendation was not simple. Um, Russ's was you can make the eligible income for the initial units, for the initial lease. So someone comes into the door and makes an application for the first time, they're not an existing tenant. Make that between 50 and 70% of AMI. And then make the eligible income for renewal leases, as we've stated here, between 50 and 80%. He said that's a very clean and clear way of solving the issue and not having to put your manager at risk of being accused of violating fair housing. Um, so I like that idea better. How many so, families do you bump <clears throat> that hit the over the 80% or a lot of families? It, they automatically get bumped. Automatically? So if you go above 80%, I think the county's new ordinance is 100%, but we don't need that. Like when I talked to Russ, he said, look, we're, we're going to have a wait list no matter what. So. If someone's starting to make above 80%, we don't necessarily bump them out of the community. We tell them what the market rents are. We say, you can stay on your unit. You don't even have to move. But now you're at market rent, and now that frees up. The next available unit in the project will go to a qualifying tenant that makes, in this case, between 50 and 70% of AMI. But so I, his solution was very elegant and simple which is the initial leases with an initial applicant um, for the restricted units have to make between 50 and 70% of area median income. But if they get a raise and they start doing better, they don't, they don't get told that their reduced rent won't be renewed until they make above 80%. Now, is that as to the, that individual uh, family or is that the 80% of the entire household in the entire um, uh, restricted units. So if you had 36. No, it's just the individual family. It's the individual so family. So as soon as that individual, and that's the way it's written now, um, mm -hmm. as soon as an individual family gets above 80%, you go to what's called qualifying tenants definition, section four. Eligible tenants for the residential units must, and then section B of that, be of eligible income as defined in two above. So once, you, once your household makes 81%, you no longer qualify. That doesn't mean we call you and evict you. It just means at the end of that year lease, when you're up for renewal, we can't renew it. But what we'll do is we're going to bump those tenants to the front of the line for any available market rate units. And so you don't have to move out. You just have to pay market rate now. And then the next available unit becomes a restricted unit. But the, the recommended change I have, if I could give you Everett the exact language, would be to change number two eligible income to read eligible income for initial or force first time leases shall be between 50 to and 70 percent of the area median income for Sussex County adjusted for household size and, up, and as updated annually by HUD and eligible income for renewal leases shall be between 50 and 80 percent of area median income. I don't know if that's said exactly the way an attorney might say it, but you, you, you understand what I'm trying to, yes. to do. Um, and you've got that written in uh, print that I would be able to read, or Mr. Fuqua, your attorney. I kind of, I just, I just re restruck. I, <laughs> my initially I was writing renewal, and then I went to first time, but I decided that didn't make sense. But yes, I can write it 
and, and give yeah. it to you. Um, I don't have any modifications to anything else that the that P and Z recommended, but I'm happy to answer question. questions so on that. Can I ask a question? I'm not opposed to this. I'm just curious. Are you are are you having difficulty having to tell tenants that they hit the threshold and they got to pay pay more? Or we haven't even built it yet. You, okay. So this is in discussions with what we actually got triggered is we had um, an outside party look at. They were doing a um, an appraisal of the project, and these people were affordable housing experts. And in doing that appraisal, they had to read our conditions of approval, and they said, "You got a big problem here." They said, "Hey, your project's not financeable the way this is written because you have rents that you can't predict." They said, "You have to set them to seventy percent of AMI." Um, and then they found some other issues, and then we went to Russ, and Russ said, "You've also presented other problems for yourself." Um, in, the, in the following way. So us coming back was to address those before we even put a shovel on the ground um, so we could avoid those problems. Quick question. Okay. Mr. Green? Do you have an idea of what the dollar amount of rent is going to be on medium between that 50% to 80%? Do you have a dollar amount yeah, so of what the, the rent's going to be? The rents are set at 70% regardless of someone's making 51% of AMI or 79% or, or of AMI. The rents are set at 70% of area median income. Do you have an idea what yes, that dollar amount they're is? They're going to be between, they're going to be discounted by about $250 to $300 a unit. And for the one bedrooms, they'll be around high 900s, I think, um, like 975. It, it changes annually as, as HUD income lim limits change. And I don't have it right in front of me, but in the, for the two bedrooms, I think it was the high 1100s, like 1175 mm -hmm. or something. And then for the three bedrooms, it was the high 1300s. And, and right now, the, the discounted, you're giving me like the discounted yeah. amount, and that is monthly. Correct. That's a monthly $900 up to $1,300, and that's with the discount. The market rate would be about 1195 for the one bedrooms, about 1495 for the two bedrooms, and 1795 for the three bedrooms. So it's about a $400 discount for the um, three bedrooms and about a $200 discount for the one bedrooms. And this is workforce or affordable? This it's workforce. So you have to be employed and you have to be working in Sussex County. Affordable is really 30 to 70 percent of AMI. And this is, remember, there's no taxpayer money in this. There's no tax credits. There's no, you know, what we used to all refer to as Section 9 or what, or Section 8. I can't remember. Um, none of that's involved in this. This is all market, this is all um, privately financed. Question, Mr. Raleigh, you had something? I can almost envision a scenario where local wage inflation is going to outpace whatever HUD says inflation is. So you could find yourself in a scenario where you have people hitting the 80 percent, you know, pretty quickly, and but then not moving out. I mean, is what's the probability or what's the risk of having a scenario where people are hitting that 80 percent, they're moving out of the program but choosing not to move, and now you don't have any new openings for lower-income I mean, families, and so you end up. We don't have the percentages of set aside that we had anticipated. Right. The short answer is um, the eviction law. That like by we have to evict them. We get audited. We one of the parts of our program, because we were not the exact Sussex County Rental Program. The Sussex County Community Development and Housing Department said that you guys are on your own. Do an audit every year and submit the audit to us. Right. But we're not we're not going to be your <clears throat> your overseer of your program because it's not our program. Right. So we have to audit if. Once a year, we have to submit an audit to the county, basically stipulating that we're abiding by all the conditions and all the provisions. And if we're letting someone live there and continue to live there past their household, knowingly past where their household earns 80% of area median income or higher, then we're in violation. Well, you're charging them the new higher rent, though. Right? Only if we move into a market rate. You remember, there's 178 units, right. of which all but 36 are at market rents. So we can legal, we can by abiding by all the stipulations of our conditions, we can take that household and say, stay in your unit. It's just now you're not paying, let's say it's a one bedroom. Right. Now you're not paying 975, you're paying 1195. Right. You're paying market rate. Um, so yeah. That and, was a question that wasn't. No, I'm just wondering if, if there's a chance that over time, 
you know, people, it's hard to find a place to rent, so they just stay there and bite the bullet and pay the higher rent. Well, well, they, well yeah, if they stay there and pay the higher rent, we don't care. Well, that's, but then the, the You have no inventory for the. You have no inventory, and so you, we don't have the, the set aside years. numbers that we had hoped and anticipated. So what would happen there is the first person that moves out of the 178 units, mm -hmm. um, but you're right, in theory, what you just said could happen. Could happen. Um, and I'm but, guessing what's the probability? But, we have one of the lowest turn Beach Palm Dunes, which is our first project in Lewis, has one of the lowest turnovers in, in, in kind of the apartment sure industry, but yeah. it's still about 25 percent a year. Is it really? Yeah, wow. but the industry average is like 35, 40 wow. percent. Um, so the, the likelihood of people kind of, well, I can tell you the answer. If that's the case, then our rents are too low. Like, we will raise our rents to market mm -hmm to the point where we should have, on average, about 5% vacancy. But that next vacant unit of all 178 units would have to go in the restricted pool. And remember, you guys, you, when I say you guys, the county did a great job protecting itself. Because it said to us, hey, look, if you can't find, which Russ ensures me that we're definitely going to be able to find enough um, qualifying tenants for the restricted units. But if you can't, you guys can rent that unit at market. But 100% of the proceeds goes to the Sussex County Community Development and not the not the difference, not the delta. Yeah, see, we proposed That's the delta. Very strong incentive. Yeah, we proposed the delta, and the county said, "No, we just we want all of it." Um, so that's what it says in here. So I don't have an incentive to not find. It's in my best financial interest to always have those 36 units rented to qualifying tenants and not to market rate tenants. Right. And plus, with the with the um, consultant we hired was a couple of years ago to talk about the workforce housing. You're you're doing much better than what they recommend AMI wise. Right. Well, the they county's like 80, program. They were like eighty percent above, weren't they? Right. And the so county's. You're doing, so you're doing a lot better for the clients or the potential renters than what our consultant. True, and not to get too complicated, but there's a nuance to that, Doug. A lot like industry wide, nationally, people usually use thirty percent of income. Yeah. Sussex County has decided to use 25% of mm -hmm. income. So 30% of 80%, yes. which I know is getting confusing, is actually <laughs> slight, is actually a, a little, I'm sorry, 25% of 80% is actually lower than 30% of 70%. Yep. Um, so, but our, but the total number of units, which is in our case 20% of the 178 units, is higher than the county's original program of 12.5%. The reason we didn't like the county's, and, you guys just tell me to stop if, if you want me to. The reason we didn't like the county's original program is because the, the delta between, it felt like a, a low income housing program. The delta between someone making 50% of AMI and the market rate units was so vast, we felt like it, it, it was more low income and not necessarily workforce housing. And that right now you're, you should be able to walk through this community. We should be able to walk through this community once it's built, and you got you won't be able to identify which units are restricted. Like it's they won't look different. The people won't be living any differently it's because you know because the difference is only two hundred four hundred dollars a unit. It's not like you're sitting here with a market rate unit at fifteen hundred and an affordable unit at five hundred. We considered that low income housing, and we made it very clear that we were not interested in that. The county has since modified its program, and now is actually brought its workforce housing program up a little bit to closer to what we've proposed here. More questions? One Thank more you. Question Mr. Green. On the income. So for a family for one bedroom paying $900, what is that income? What, what is their, like, two, two people's income? So right now the area median income, and I'm, if I miss, it's like 58700 or something like that. Sure. Ballpark, about right. Yeah. 58000 for so you take 70% of that um, to get to what 70% of area median income is, and then you take 30% of that, and that's what I can charge annually in rent. Um, but your, so their meet, their income as a household would probably be about 38 to $40,000. Right. Wow. Yeah. I'm happy for Sure. What Remember, like everyone's like, well, that's not affordable, but we're, yeah. we're, it's certainly more affordable than the $700,000 homes we're selling out there. Well, like, it's, it's a step in the right direction. And I'm not trying to be. Like, Russ is a low income housing developer, and he is running to people making 30% of AMI and charging them $375 a month in rent. 
but he's using taxpayer money and he's using federal programs and, and other types of programs in order to do that. We're not using any of that and we're not trying to be a low income project. We're trying to be a workforce housing yeah, project. It's targeted towards teachers and, and police officers and right. people like, you know, starting out. It's not, it's not low income. Right. It's not so, low income at all. I hope it really People is. misconstrue that all the time. Yeah, they get it confused. They don't right. Question, anybody? I have one question, either for you or Jamie. Explain to me condition G. That's a, that seems to be a bad letter today. G. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, I can take it. You, by the letter G. <laughs> you want me to field it? Uh, or do you want to field yeah, it? Yeah, so the, the original requirements, it was the requirement for the sidewalks on both sides and the, the concern that was raised, and, and this is in your paperless packet in the minutes, it was discussed during the public hearing at the pre-application stage that the requirements of the condition as written would essentially require connections that wouldn't be used practically. So Correct. in order to, to allow... Sidewalks to nowhere? Single sidewalks, yeah, sidewalks to nowhere, basically back from numbered road into the development. So this, this was... A, a middle ground that was more practical. They still have to provide the multimodal path. That still has to go through the commission. It's just that it doesn't necessarily require two of them where one of them would be, achieve the same result. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry. Yes. It's, it, do you have the site plan? Uh, don't don't worry about it if you don't. Yeah, so there were situations where sidewalks were on the other side of the street where there were no buildings and no one would ever use them. And so we went to Hans and said, Hans, why would we build this sidewalk? And he said, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll recommend change it, change in language, but I want a lot more connectivity with all your your paths and your sidewalks on the site than you have now. And I said, okay, fine, we'll, we'll create more connectivity, but I don't want to build these useless sidewalks. And he said, okay, and he recommended this language. Okay, I just, I just, when I read the thing, it says the entrance road up to and including the first intersection must meet or exceed the street design requirements. So that's... As, as is the road design requirements all in that too. Correct. So is that, uh, they well, have a different road that goes from there on out that's going to be a cobblestone road or something, right? <laughs> no. It was a number of routes, not the design of the routes that was being That's right. Out. Okay. I'm just making sure we're not going to just, we're not like going downhill here somewhere. No. That's good. That's good. Very Any good. more questions? We're so, good. yeah, one more thing. So the, county, so the county will work with you on more rentals? Is, is there no, so this is just a change to a couple of the conditions of approval. This is not a, a new hearing on the project as a whole. Like the 36 units and all that was decided before you were on the council, which is why you're not okay. familiar with it. Um, but we had inadvertently written several of our own and self-imposed um, conditions that we realized after the fact, after talking to more experienced people in this field, would not work. And we're just trying to correct for those right now. Okay. So that's different than what some of the new things that we are working on or encouraging. But I'm a huge, like, yeah. for what it's worth, I'm a huge fan of the stuff you guys are working on. Okay. I think that's, you, you'll see guys like me use it, and you won't just see guys like me use it. You'll see a lot of other people use that, um, the new um, Sussex County Rental Program. It's a good program. And it was, that's because tons of experts came in and advised you guys on it and helped write it. And so now I think it really works. More questions? Mr. Moore? Okay. Do you have anything else to add, uh, Mr. Shell? Mr. Fuquay? If not, is there anyone else in the room that would like to speak in favor of this application? Anyone in favor? Is there anyone in the room? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Russ Huxville. I was the one who is uh, being referred to. I work for, for Milford Housing Development Corporation. We are one of the state's largest nonprofit affordable housing developers, and most of that work is actually done in Sussex County. And we do recommend some of these changes uh, because just for functionality of how you need to rent um, in these restricted areas. And, and just one, one point, um, low-income housing is actually workforce housing in this county. There's lots of folks who are, live in our apartment complexes that are considered low-income housing tax credit projects who are working families that work right here in this county doing a variety of jobs, enhancing our community, enhancing our way of life. So, but this is just a different higher level of affordable housing. Um, and with that, I know some of the concerns, the way that it was phrased before, having eligible tenants between 50 and 80 percent, one of the concerns was that, well, what if everyone came in at 78 percent? 
we, we want, really want to target the lower income families. And as it was written, if someone is eligible between 50 and 80 percent, that is what had to happen. So I really do believe that the change uh, to have that initial tenant be between 50 and 70 percent uh, achieves the goals that you have for this program. And obviously we are strong uh, proponents of affordable housing in every community uh, in Sussex County and in this entire state. So we are in, obviously in favor of projects that help enhance our ability to deliver affordable housing solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this application? Uh, seeing none, is there anyone here that would like to speak in opposition? Come forward, please. <laughs> My name is Sherry Kastner. I live at 23593 Rabala, Court, Rabala Road in Frankfurt. Um, I'm here for this project. You can pull the mic stand if oh, you would like. thanks. Naturally tall. I agree, and I think everybody in this room agrees, that we all need workforce housing. And nobody's objecting to that. Um, and I think if you say something about low-income housing, then you're automatically looked at as a racist. But the issue here is it's not the low-income housing. It's the apartments. For how many amendments does a developer submit before you finally say, no, 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 you have to start over, or you miss a deadline, and then you start over and you say, no, you've got too many amendments, start at the beginning. And it doesn't seem like that's happening here. You just keep approving and approving and approving. I mean, if you look at any of the new developments or the existing developments off of Route 20 or Zion or Bayard, they all have sidewalks on both sides. I guarantee you the setback's 50 feet, not 10 feet like this project wants. I don't understand how they got a 10-foot setback. Um, in the original doc, in the original uh, preliminary hearing, I guess it was, you talked about traffic. Well, there's, it's four years now, five years. New developments, there's so much traffic in, not even in the summer, before summer. On Route 54, you should know this, on Route 54, it will take you an hour to get anywhere because the traffic is so bad. And all the time you go. Right. Pretty much sure. all the time. Um, the other thing is, some of us moved down to Frankfurt area, down to lower Delaware, because we didn't want the traffic that's up in Lewis. And it gets worse. One of the things, though, uh, this isn't about redoing the application. I asked um, is, Mr. Whitehouse if I could, you said this is a public forum, this, this and I is asked. A, this is a public forum mm -hmm. on the matter that's before us. And that's the matter is you. the matter is not on the traffic issues, things like that, but on specifically on the amount of the change that area on uh, G, excuse me, B, which has mm -hmm. to do with the affordable ability. Also, the entrance route that Mr. Uh, uh, Vincent just asked and the amenities, the timeline. It's mm -hmm. not rehash of the whole uh, application. I understand that. Okay. But in 2018, 500 mm -hmm. residents had wrote letters of opposing this project. That was in 2018. We're okay, you know how many more park. developments are now open and more people live there since 2018? The, and when that, we were that, here, that, wait that a minute, was, let me finish, No, that please. was already approved, ma'am. So we're talking this specific issue. Okay, I have one more question, and then I'll leave. And you may throw me out of here for asking huh. this. But how many of you here have taken vacations with the Shell family? Who? The, the Shell family. family. Vacations? Yeah. What are, you, what are you accusing of? I'm, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just I asking. Have, no, I've never, never had a cup of coffee with a shell, but uh, <laughs> I never have. Lord knows. Well, thank you, because at what point do you listen to the residents that live here? Oh, boy. This? You're my congressman. At what point do they listen to you? You got promoted. <laughs> no, you're not? <laughs> you're, you said I'm your congressman. I, I, think, I think the issue is, I understand what you're saying, but this public hearing has <clears throat> nothing to do with approving or disapproving, or it's only the three items, item I, item G, and B. item B. And that was my original question. But how many amendments? Nothing in here about traffic. No. How many amendments do you have to have before you say, wait a minute, why don't you start over? Let's do this all in one so you don't have all the citizens' complaints and you have it done right the first time. 
How many amendments do you get to keep doing? No, there, is no, there is no magical number that I know of. I don't understand what you're saying. How, how many of us have been on vacation with the shells? I, I don't know where you're going with that. Well, don't worry about it then. Oh, I know, you where, haven't. You're, I know where you're going. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. You're assuming something. I just asked a simple question. Well, I think I think yes. that question was out of line. Seriously, I said you can throw me out because of that. But we're not going to throw anybody out. Well, it was just an honest question. That's all. Because wow. it seems like there's so much opposition, wow. and you all just ignore everybody. I don't think that's the case. I mean, it's all it's opposition. Where there's there's two of you sit oh, in this room. Mr. Hudson, did I insult you? Ma'am, I'm speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where's all the opposition? We to were these, here at, these three three at the last to these meeting. three items. Well, you shut us down at the last meeting, so I, I specifically asked if I could speak. I didn't shut you down so, at any meeting. At the last meeting, you did? Yes, you did. So. You said I couldn't talk about the traffic. I couldn't talk about this. I what, couldn't talk about that. What last meeting are you talking about? I beg your pardon? What last meeting are you referencing? What was it, the end of January or February, the beginning of February? I don't remember. Weren't you planning and zoning? Huh? He wasn't even here. Huh? He wasn't even here. That was planning and zoning. Okay, well, I'm here now. Yes, you are. And you so, can address those three things if you choose to. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Hi, my name is Diane Huber. I live at 30876 Iron Branch Road. Uh, my mother owns the 20 acres right next door to the Shell Project, the wooded area, the 20.14 ABI. And I just wanted to ask a quick question. Are we actually changing the zoning? Because it reads the same. You're changing it from the HR1-RPC high density residential. And it sounds like you're going to the same thing. Is that just to allow for the amendments or? It, 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 it is. Just, yeah. Go ahead. So, so that the way it's described when you amend the conditions of an RPC is to describe it as you're changing from a HR1 RPC to a HR1 RPC, but then we put in, in parentheses afterwards to, to change the conditions of approval. It's perfectly standard when amending an RPC. So. Okay. I was okay. just confused by that. Okay. And one more question for Mr. Shell. Are the units three or four stories? Okay, because originally it was supposed to be 200 and some units, and you put it down to 178, because that... It was never more than 178. The original proposal? Correct. Okay. Well, I thought when we finally, when it was approved, it was supposed to be three stories. No, All the we buildings. offered that as a settlement option that you guys were suing us, but you guys rejected it. So it's no longer three. So, so okay. Yes, yeah, so there's... Yeah. Okay. Well, All right. Four stores, it's All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition? Anyone else in the room? Seeing an operator, is there anyone online that would like to opine? At this time, there is currently no one on the line. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we can close the public hearing on this matter now. Sure. Council can desires close public question? record. Real quick question. Um, Mr. Riley, since we have Mr. Shell here, would you take a minute and... and Kind of show us where the buffering is going to be on the property and how what the distance are to the uh, neighboring properties. The, in my head, I'm thinking it's pretty substantial. I just want to verify. So on this side, it's about 100 feet. Now remember, like, sorry, I'm not going to the mic. Um, a buffer usually, there's a 30-foot wooded buffer right there up against existing woods. Right. But the um, setback response to, replies, um, is related to buildings. And it's 100 feet there. And on the other side, that's about 60 to 70 feet between the edge of what looks like building five and the property line. So saying that we have a 10 foot setback is entirely inaccurate. And then the back part of the property that butts up to. Um... Oh, that's over. I think the closest point there at one point we measured, it was like a 173 feet or something like that. Through the woods. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. I mean, it's, it's 
as much as anybody and probably more than average. Yeah, it's substantial. Which side would that be? Which side is next to the wood? That's in Creek Estates is right here. Oh, this on the bottom. So this is this is 40 feet right here. So I'm just eyeballing it. Um, that's about 60, probably 60 to 65 feet. Okay. For the building. For the building. The parking lot. Well, the the parking lot is outside the 30 feet, so it looks like it's about 35 feet. Like our property line. Correct. And you're not cutting down any trees. I think there's something. Right there. Eric, do you want me to get into this? Do you want me to continue this? No, we're, we're, not, no, we're not talking. This hearing is for three things only, not about right. trees or anything else. We have indulgement. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Okay. I think I'd indicated we can close the public hearing now. Close public hearing. Public, 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 uh, public record. And Mr. more with a short title, please. Yes, just give me a second, please. And an ordinance amend the comprehensive zoning map of Sussex County from an HR-1 RPC high density residential district residential plan community to an HR-1 RPC high density residential district residential plan community to amend conditions of approval of change zone number 1858 that's ordinance number 2621 relating to the workforce housing requirements internal road standards and amenities deadlines for a certain parcel of land lying and being in Baltimore 100, Sussex County, containing 14.8455 acres for the reasons given by planning and zoning numbered 1 through 7 with conditions 8B, G, and I. Raise your counsel. Move for adoption. Motion, Mr. Riley. Now, there was a request as a possibility of change. Did anyone want to consider the amendment? That was proffered. Uh, I think we do. Is it ready for? Uh, we could uh, certainly read that in. Read that in, then we'll take the vote on that. Okay. okay. We, we don't need to do the amendment as a separate vote. We'll do the amendment right now. That's just what we would okay. do now. Yes. And that would be under uh, 8B2. That would be changed to eligible income for first time or initial leases shall be 50% to 70% of area medium income for Sussex County as established by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, and updated annually and as adjusted for the household and unit size. Eligible income for renewal Leases shall be between 50% and 80% of AMI. Mr. Riley, that's your motion for the amendment, Mr. Riley. Move for adoption. Motion, Mr. Riley. Second. Second, Mr. Hudson. Is the amendment only? The amendment only. Yes. Any questions on that motion? We'll take the vote, Mr. Riley. I vote yes. Mr. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Hudson. Yes. I vote yes. Motion carried. Now, Mr. Moore. 